Hello and welcome back to Small Talk. We've got a great episode ahead as we chat with a pair from Lewis and Clark. I'm your host, Katie Mucci. Each week on this show, we highlight the past and present of Division Three, with both current and former student athletes joining to talk about their experiences, their favorite on-campus spots, the craziest road trip stories, and more. This week, we're chatting with Mariah Schaffhausen, a current member of the rowing team, along with former student athlete, Cassie Metz. The two talk about their favorite memories from the team, their journey to rowing at Lewis and Clark, why they enjoyed their Division Three experiences, and more. Thanks for joining. Now it's time for some small talk. Hi, my name is Mariah. I'm a current member of the Lewis and Clark rowing team. Hi, my name is Cassie. I'm a former member of the Lewis and Clark rowing team. Thank you both so much for being here today. I'm excited to chat with you. I had my first podcast episode about rowing last week, so I am still a newbie, still learning the terminology. So hopefully you don't laugh too hard if I say something silly, but I'm excited to hear about your stories and your time at Lewis and Clark. Um, So the first thing we're going to do is chat about your on-campus life. So we'll start with you, Mariah, um, and you and your team, you and your teammates, what are kind of those spots around campus, whether it's on campus or like a coffee shop or something local to the town? What are some of those spots that you guys like to hang out? And then Cassie, if you want to follow up and, you know, it's been a little bit since you've been there um, as a student. So maybe follow up and see if anything has changed. Um, yeah, I think, well, especially right after practice, um, we just all have a tradition. Like our dining hall has these like huge long tables and our um, our team has gotten to the size of which where we can fill up like a whole like extra long table uh, in our dining hall and so I think that's like our main like time for like team bonding of like talking about like how stuff went after the row and then yeah like before practice though especially when it's nice out um where we like kind of drive or where we meet up to kind of drive to practice um it's like this like tiny little like miniature golf course but it's just like a couple holes and it's, it's really weird um, and so I think that's definitely like a good time for the team to like talk, like kind of get like hyped up. Um, but yeah. Cassie, any of that sound familiar or were you guys doing different things? Uh, we definitely hung out at breakfast at the the time it was called the bone because it was bone appetite. I don't know if it's the same, uh, but we would hang out there for a long time after practice we I don't think we would fill a whole of those big long tables but definitely a chunk of them at the time we had some people that would go back for seconds and thirds and their plates would continue to stack up as we sat there at breakfast and more and more food was being consumed uh we used to meet to drive to practice just right outside the the bone there everyone would pile into the 15 passenger vans and head on down very early darkly in the morning (laughs) that's one thing I heard last week on the episode was how early you guys practice and have to get up so pretty early mornings for the rowing team is what I'm hearing we actually transition so that our practices are mostly from three to six in the afternoon which I find really nice because I am not really good we have um probably one or two days a week um, or not two to three days a week we have early mornings on Wednesdays and then Saturdays and then our 2B practices early on Fridays because they have class conflicts um, but like the last time we the first time that we did an early morning practice was right after our spring break and we did uh, seat racing and we did 750s and right after I looked to my coach and I was like Sam can we please never do that again <laughs> Like, like going fast in the morning like that, it just was not, oh my goodness, I can't handle it. Oh yeah, it was very early all the time. Uh, Novice met and practiced in the afternoons, but because of the boats, there weren't enough. So the entire team couldn't be out necessarily at the same time um, on the the nicer shells. So we would, we'd split it up. Um, throughout the day and so it's very early all the time I think my alarm went off at like 4 a.m for many years <laughs> oh man I could not do it so god bless you for that um next let's talk about on the road so generally when I interview people in d3 I talk about how you don't travel too much but you guys being a west coast team um probably do travel a bit more I know you guys looked at your schedule for this year at least you stay in Oregon you do some California trips 
Um, but then obviously Mariah last year with NCAs, you got to go across the country. Um, and Cassie, I'm sure you had some trips during your time as well. So let's talk about road and, and kind of what that's like. So, uh, Cassie, I'll have you start this one off when you were on the team and you guys got to travel, what were some of your, your favorite trips you got to go on, whether it was the location or just the event? You know, it was always fun to travel once again, very early in the morning, we ate a lot of those sweet and salty nut bars and Costco bagels is pretty much what we lived on for a long, a long day like that. Uh, all around Oregon and, and Washington, it was really fun to go to Weira. So we'd fly down to Sacramento every year. That was something to look forward to because it was warm. It usually wasn't raining. Uh, the, the water was usually really nice and not choppy. So I feel like with a lot of other regattas, you didn't know what you were going to get. But pretty standardly, the weather there was good and <laughs> nice and, and great. Um, yeah, and, and flying it, we had to fly to national uh, to nationals. That was that's too far to trek across and drive. And where was nationals for you guys when you were there? Was that Sacramento or a different trip? No, no, we're so Sacramento is we're at the West Coast okay. Intercollegiate Rowing uh, Association. Uh, right. Nationals was on the East Coast. We uh, I forget the name of the lake actually. I'm guessing it's the same one. Mariah, where did you guys go? We went to Jersey. It was hosted by um, Temple last year. And see, so we read on whatever waterway that is. Awesome. So, well, for Mariah, kind of same question for you. What have been some of your favorite trips? And whether, like I said, whether it's the actual cool location you go to or the regatta. Yeah, so we've been able, um, like on and off, we'll go up to uh, Seattle for one of University of Washington's races. Um, we went my novice year and then uh, they also went last year or last semester. Um, but yeah, this semester for the first time, we went to uh, Humboldt for their uh, Blue Heron Regatta. And it was we had to drive down, which was eight hours. And it was it was fun being there, but the drive definitely got on us after a whole day of racing um yeah usually we also fly to Weira but our my novice year we flew down to Weira and then our flights back up got canceled and so we had to join Pacific's uh like we had to join Pacific and drive all the way up which I think is about like 11 right yeah 10 or 10 or so hours up um right right during finals it was like we got in probably to Lewis and Clark at like midnight. And then I know some people on the team had like 8 a.m. finals the next day, um, which was not fun, but yeah. That student athlete life. Um, so speaking of that, when you're on these trips, any tour, did you guys have time to do anything touristy in the towns or were you pretty much in and out for those trips? Either of you can answer that if you have something. I think usually when we're in Sacramento, um, like we're allowed to be a little like touristy at the race course, you know, there's usually there's like, uh, we're as a huge event. And so there's a bunch of teams um, and also like a bunch of like tables and like merch stuff and uh, like car food carts and things like that. Um, and so we're allowed to like rock wander around the race course. But I think that one's a, it's a little too quick of like in and out because it's like right after it's right during our reading days for school before finals. Um, and so we don't end up doing anything touristy. But when we went to Humboldt, we were able to like, um, we had some time to like walk around uh, like their town square. And then on our drive back up, we got to stop at Big Tree, which was really fun. I don't remember us doing anything touristy <laughs> really anywhere. I mean, we we get up so early and the races are so early. And then, yeah, usually it's back to campus uh, as soon as we can or getting various places um, for whatever reason, I think. If I'm thinking, if I'm remembering correctly, the most touristy thing we did was when we randomly would stop at Centralia on the way back or to any regatta. And um, a few of my former teammates reminded me, I kind of had to phone a friend before this because it's it's been a while. So I contacted a lot of them for some I other memories. That. And uh, some of them mentioned that they haven't been to Arby's since because they ate so much Arby's in Centralia for various <laughs> times. So I don't think that's touristy, but that's what we did <laughs> that's great um now let's switch gears again and talk about academics so the student part of student athlete the reason you're getting back for 8 a.m finals um Cassie when you were in school what was your major and I 
what have you gone on to do? Uh, so my major was uh, sociology and anthropology. And I went on to, after graduating, I coached for a couple of years before I then went to nursing school. So I haven't particularly used my sociology and anthropology degree so much as sociology has to do with, with nursing in general. So um, I guess that counts, but I'm, I'm a nurse. I uh, worked for a while um, at a, in the operating room um, at a pediatric hospital. Very cool. I feel like sociology is one of those things that'll help you out in most areas of life. So very good. Mariah, what is your major since you are in the thick of it? I'm also a sociology and anthropology major. There we go. Um, so since you're in the middle of it, any, and you might know, you might know your professors who've been there for a while. Any professors that you think might've been there around for Cassie's time too? Did you ever have Bruce Podobnik? Was he there? I know he's been here for a while. Yes. I, have <laughs> I have him for social theory right now and he's a funny guy. <laughs> so many of those professors were so great. They're all very nice and and just good people. Yeah, awesome. I th- yeah, I think a lot of our professors in the department are newer within the recent years, but, but yeah, there's definitely some ones who have stuck around for a while. Okay, awesome. Well, since you're, like I said, since you're in the middle of it, any favorite classes so far or favorite professors or anything like that that you've enjoyed about your experience? Yeah, I have this one class right now um, called Power, Privilege, and Inequality, and we're basically talking about, like, like class, um, like, socioeconomic class, and, um, like, kind of, like, uh, basically just, like, we're talking a lot about, like, cultural capital and uh, basically, like, how like elite kids like learn things and how like um, like through their education at like like private boarding schools um and it's really interesting and I really love that class awesome and you are a junior or okay very cool um so now we're gonna get into some story time and the first thing I want to hear is the funniest or craziest story but appropriate for this podcast so Cassie I'll have you kick this one off and then Mariah you can just follow right up Um, I mean, I think every crew team has their stories of conditions that are terrible and boats that are sinking as they're going down the course and things like that. So the only thing I could really think of that came to the top of my head is uh, one time, which often happens on college campuses, uh, norovirus came through the whole campus. And it just happened to be so perfectly timed that we had a regatta that day. So... There was, there were subs going in and out. People were dropping like flies. It was kind of a wild day of everyone just kind of getting on deck and taking over for other people. Some people racing twice as many races as they were originally intending if they happened to feel okay. Uh, it was, it was an interesting few days on campus. That's for sure. A couple people end up having to go to the ED later. Like it was, it was a memorable regatta, I'd have to say. Yeah, that does not sound fun. Mariah? Uh, but this wasn't at a regatta. It's the night before a regatta. Um, and one of the guys on the men's team, but, um, he, uh, the, a couple of boys on the men's team were playing chicken and because uh, we were staying in a hotel um, in Eugene, Oregon. And um, one of the guys on the bottom, you, know, you have two people on top fighting. Um, one of the guys on the bottom, Caleb, he hit his face right against one of the guys on top's knee and he broke his nose the night before a race and so now whenever I'm near a pool and people are like messing around in the pool I just get flashbacks to that moment of seeing him break his nose um but yeah (laughs) did he get up and race the next day too no he could not I was gonna say that would be pretty tough Um, well, those were funny or crazy stories, but now let's talk about just some favorite memories. So you both have had been on pretty successful teams there. Um, but sometimes maybe it's not anything to do with your success or your, your NCAA, but what is just like a favorite memory that stands out to you? And, um, we'll go the other direction. So Mariah, you can start and Cassie, you can follow up. I think probably was winning conference last year. Like we, you know, Puget Sound has been like kind of our main like conference rival for uh, a couple years and so just like you know we had like length on them and then 
you know, during the sprint, they started like creeping up on us, but we were able to like hold it off by a couple seats. And um, there's this like video that was posted on the Lewis and Clark rowing Instagram of like, like our coaches videoing it and like watching it happen. And I remember like being in the boat, I was in bow. So I like kept looking over like head fully out of the boat and being like, okay, their like bow is on my seat. Like we got to hold them off. Um, but you can like see here in the video of like right when we're hitting the finish of like our coach being like they got it and like some of our men seem like cheering for us and it was just I don't know sometimes I watch that video every so often it's it's a really sweet video that's great Cassie you know this was a really hard one to think about I'd have to say I I don't think that there it first of all it was quite a while ago at this point in time I don't know if there is a story that I can pinpoint in particular that really takes the cake over the others but in the similar vein of you know what Mariah just said that it's it's a special it's a special team it's a special place which might is probably not unique to us and everyone feels this way but it's it's a it's a special place everyone is rooting for each other and and those are the lifelong friends that you have forever. I mean, I'm still so close to so many of those teammates that I was able to text so many of them over the past week and, and get a number of responses back from people about things that they've remembered and that they're just really thankful for the team in general and the friends that we've made and how supportive everyone always is of each other. You know, you get a lot of people that are, are of from different places and and maybe you get a team together and it's not necessarily your roommate. A lot of times it is because when you're running around freshman year recruiting people and you go into a room and then the two of them become rowers for four years. Uh, but it's not always your roommate. It's, it's, it's people that are then become your family for the time that you're there. So it's, you know, everyone, everyone staying together and being friends for a long time afterwards. We have a group of people, I haven't been to Portland in a while, um, actually in a couple of years, but I've tried to make it back and people come out every time. And I mean, there's so many of us that are just so close. Um, there's one memory of one particular teammate that will stick with me forever. So she was on the soccer team. She hurt her knee to the point where she couldn't play soccer anymore. So now she, for some reason, the most logical thing to her was joining the rowing team, which once again, talking about the early morning practices, I don't know whether that's the logical choice for anyone, but you know, sure that it worked for her. Um, and she, in her first ERG test, there, no one, everyone hates them. They're awful. <laughs> no one feels good. <laughs> and she's smiling the entire time and yet somehow posting times faster than a lot of other people and it was wild to watch her this like natural athlete who just kind of came onto the team and went on to be a fantastic grower for the rest of the time that she was there so it's just meeting people like that and admire I just admire so many of those people and still think about them that's awesome. And you actually bring up, I have two follow-up questions for you, but the first one, I feel like a lot of people I know who are rowers or are in rowing in college, especially like maybe had never done it prior to college. So for both of you, had you been rowing in, in high school or anything like that, or did you kind of, you were just an athlete and got to Lewis and Clark and wanted to do it. So I guess Mariah, you can go first and Cassie. Yeah, I actually never did sports before I came to Lewis and Clark I did theater in high school um, <laughs> and um, when I was we had like this like little like um, LC like club fair my freshman year and one of my friends was thinking about joining the running team and I was like oh that's so cool like I'm gonna do that too um, and so yeah I just walked on and then I kept rowing yeah I love that Cassie how about you I did uh, I did um row in in high school um and then came on to the team um onto varsity and so I was the really loud having too much energy freshman running around from door to door trying to convince people to come and join the team when they <laughs> maybe maybe didn't even know what rowing was uh so yeah that 
that was me trying to convince people. I think my freshman year, there were only three of us that came onto the team that had, uh, that had rowed in, in high school. Everyone uh, I just think that's team. such a cool, unique thing about the sport of rowing. I have a friend who was at a, you know, a power five division one school and had never rowed in her life. She was just like a multi-sport athlete through high school got there and they were trying to, you know, build out their team and ended up rowing at Kansas. And so I'm like, oh, so fascinating. Um, my other follow-up question though, is Cassie, when I was doing my research before this, I saw that a few years ago, I think it's a 2017, your team was inducted into the Lewis and Clark Hall of Fame. Is that accurate? Am I messing this up? <laughs> no, that's right. I, yes. I had picked up, I was trying to find among some boxes that are happening at the moment, <laughs> I was trying to find my LC gear that still exists. So I have um, this jacket and then this, this is kind of an infamous um, visor that I wore for almost every day of practice and every regatta. It has been washed many times, but as you can imagine, it's, you know, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um, and then I found this one. So yeah, it was, uh, there you go. it was, a, it was a real, it was really fun. It was kind of a reunion. It was really fun to come in a lot. I think almost all of that entire boat came. Uh, it was really fun to see people. And I, it it was great. It was a really fun time. Uh, and, and we joke because the other, one of the other um, individuals that got into the Hall of Fame at the same time, inducted into the Hall of Fame at the same time, was the, the, the original... Pio dog so we were there being inducted along with Pio the dog <laughs> honestly best class probably the induction <laughs> that's awesome yeah I saw that and I I guess maybe just like a obviously very fun to be inducted alongside a dog but for you when you maybe got the call or however they notified you about your team getting inducted what was that like for you I mean like I said it's it's just a it's a special team. Like nationals was really cool. Uh, it was a really, really amazing experience. You know, it, it, it came about due to a lot of advocacy from our coach. Uh, and he, because, you know, generally we didn't get funds to go and, and do things like that. So it's really a credit to him, um, and his love of the team and the sport and everything that, that, we were able to actually go. Uh, it was and it was really cool. We stayed after, um, stayed after, and there there is no air conditioning in the dorms. We learned which during the fall and spring doesn't really matter, but it did matter in the middle of the summer. Uh, but that team, you know, it was a it was a unique bonding experience for that boat and and the team at the time. So being able to come back and kind of relive that and. They're the type of friendships where it doesn't matter how long it's been. You just pick up exactly where you left off. And it's just, it, it was so fun to hear about everyone's lives and what they've been up to and everything and how so many things have changed and yet nothing has changed at the same time. Like it was, it was fun to have the opportunity to have that type of reunion. I feel lucky in that regard. I don't think everyone gets that opportunity. So that that's more what it was for me hearing that, it was a reason to bring everyone together again. I think that's always, always a positive thing. It was really, it was cool. It was fun. So now we are going to start to wrap it up with a couple of questions. Um, just kind of more about division three, a little bit more abstract. So the first one I have for both of you is what does it mean to you to be, or to have been a division three student athlete? Um, and maybe that's getting to be involved in different clubs or organizations or getting to focus more on your academics or maybe it's something else. So Mariah, I'll have you start. Yeah, I think for me, it is kind of like all of those things of like, you know, I get to really focus on my academics, I get to like, you know, I'm taking, I'm doing my thesis next semester. And so like, I, after fall season ends and at the end of October, like, I'll have time to like, you know, actually be a student and like, work on like my thesis. So like the kind of like culmination of like all the work I've done throughout those four years. Um, and also like, being D3 has allowed me to like, run other clubs. Like I run our building club on campus um, and also like work and also have time to, you know, be a person and have friends out of the team. Um, you think Kathy? Yeah, I think at the time, I'm not sure that I 
appreciated the difference between being a D3 athlete and being a D1 or D2. I And I can't speak to being a D1 or D2 because I was a D3 athlete. I, you know, looking back, I did get to spend a, a time on my academics, which was great. I lived for a long time during my thesis in a special corner of the library on the southwest side and table where you're not supposed to bring snacks but I always had snacks because I always had them <laughs> statute of limitations I had snacks in there all the time <laughs> uh you know it's it it did give me time to do that and, and i I totally did not appreciate it at the time, but you know, academics are important and I've always, for some reason, I can't stop going and going back to school for some reason. So <laughs> apparently I, I really value that. Uh, and, and it was, it was fun. It was, it didn't stress me out then. Like, yeah, we had a lot of practice and we took a lot of time for that. And, but I did have time for doing everything, which I feel like if you don't know any better, it's hard to, uh, hard to appreciate that, that at the time but looking back I definitely I definitely do appreciate that there was time to focus on studies when I needed to great well we won't tell anybody you snuck snacks in there we will just post this on the internet for people to see <laughs> we'll see if they find it see if they make it this far in the episode um my last question for both of you is what you know we're 50 years down in division three this podcast is part of our 50th anniversary celebration so what do you see or maybe what do you hope to see for the future of division three and We'll go opposite Cassie, then Mariah, and then we will close it out. You know, this one was a hard one to think about. I think that D3 athletics are are so important. I think that having that opportunity to have the balance is important for, a, you know, for a lot of people. There are people that want to focus more on sports, and then there are some people that want to be able to have the combo so having that available and having schools within that tier I think is so valuable so I I'm not sure about any if I would make necessarily changes I think it's I'm a little bit farther removed from from thinking about that I probably would have been able to speak to that more eloquently <laughs> closer to the time um but I don't know. I really valued my experience. And I think that there's a lot of other people who, who would value the same. And I just think it's a wonderful opportunity. You learn so much in athletics and I just think it's really valuable. It's been very valuable for everything in, in the rest of my life so far. A lot of the things that I learned being on the team. All right, Mariah, close us out. Yeah, for me, I think it's mostly, I hope for a couple more. I hope that D3 rowing can be a little expanded on the West Coast. Within our conference, there are a lot of schools, but only, um, only three other have two, or only three other have rowing programs, and only two others are able to row two eights. Um, and so, and only one other team has a men's program and they only have a four, which is Puget Sound. And so I think just a little more like breadth of like people to like be able to see at races, like, you know, I love the schools that we race against, um, but just like when we get to go to Weira, it's just so exciting because there's just so many people, you know, and it's just, like, um, yeah, it's just really fun to be racing against a lot of really strong crews um and I want that for you know our women's team and also our especially our men's team right well thank you both so much for being here I know Mariah you literally have conference in two days I think if I saw your schedule right so I really appreciate you being here when I know you're you're getting ready for a big meet or a big regatta I shouldn't say meet um a big regatta but thank you both and Cassie thank you for taking time out of your day to be here as well I appreciate it no problem. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Glad we could be here. To everyone listening, thanks for tuning into this episode of Small Talk, where we post new episodes every week. To follow along with everything Division 3, you can find us on social media at NCAA D3 or NCAA DIII. Make sure to join the conversation with us all year long by using the hashtag DIII50. 
Have a great day and we'll see you for some more small talk next week.